Internal Revenue Service IRS tax news. Reminder, file 2019 and 2020 returns by September 30th to get COVID penalty relief. Honestly, I have to file by September 30th to get COVID relief? What, what are they gonna do if I don't file? Withhold the vaccine? I mean, this is ridiculous. I have to file my taxes to get COVID penalty. I, they make it sound like the whole COVID thing was just some kind of IRS collection strategy all along. The IRS is like, let's see, how can we increase the government revenue? Hitting people with financial fees and interest is just not strong enough of a stick. What we really need is some kind of threat of death. Hey, I have an idea. I'm fairly certain our good buddies over at the Wuhan lab, you know, in China, the ones that we fund with all that gain of function money we send them all the time. I'm sure they could come up with something. Honestly, all the pieces are fitting together now. And the picture it's making is as ugly as that storyteller they keep on making my five-year-old child watch during story hour. Put the pieces back in the box for crying out loud. I want to work out a different jigsaw puzzle. One that has a nice picture. I've been reliably informed that mum's the word. Remember, mum's the word. Suddenly, mum, 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 mum. But it's like, wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Eternal chaos comes with chocolate rain, you guys. Chocolate rain. How can mum be the word? It's like, mum, mum, buns, buns, chocolate tongues. I mean, I, I'm not even sure mum is a word. No such things, chums. <gasps> you know, like, I don't think I've ever used mum in a sentence before. Did you hear I used existentialist in a sentence? I heard. I've always wanted to do that. It was very impressive. Ah. It, it's kind of like saying shakalaka is the word. Boom shakalaka. It's like, that's, that shakalaka's not a word. That's not a word. <laughs> you have no idea what this means, do you? No. Then why did you print it? I like the kitty. It's more like a cool sounding nonsense thing. A robin redbreast in a cage puts all heaven in rage. Yeah, that's IR 2022-163, September 22nd, 2022, Washington. The Internal Revenue Service today reminded struggling individuals and businesses affected by the COVID-19 pandemic that they may qualify for late filing penalty relief if they file their 2019 and 2020 returns by September 30th, 2022. Besides providing relief to both individuals and businesses impacted by the pandemic, this step is designed to allow the IRS to focus its resources on processing backlogged tax returns and taxpayer correspondence to help return to normal operations by the 2023 filing season. So if you don't know, the IRS kind of got backed up on some of the work there due in part to the pandemic, the response to the pandemic, including the social distancing stuff, which they tried to implement in essence from a top-down perspective. So a lot of the craziness went to government entities, you would think, like the IRS and other people that are a little bit more sane, that are a little bit further away, uh, probably didn't get hit by so much of the heavy handedness of that. And then of course, some of the responses to the pandemic were going through the IRS laws and regulations. So things like the stimulus payments and whatnot went through basically the IRS. They also had changes that were fairly significant to the IRS tax law. And those changes are gonna make things a little bit more difficult to process everything uh, because normally things change quite slow uh, with regards to the income tax law where that's generally what we would like to generally happen. So they got backed up on stuff and they're trying to basically get everything uh, up to speed so that they can go into the next filing season coming up shortly that for the 2022 filing season that starts into you know 2023 as best they can but also note that they also hired a bunch more people so we'll see how efficient <laughs> they are with it with that as well in any case uh quote we thought carefully about the, uh, the type of penalties, the period covered, and the duration before granting this penalty relief. We understand the concerns being raised by the tax community and others about the September 30th penalty, penalty relief deadline, end quote, said IRS Commissioner Chuck Reddick, quote, given planning for the upcoming tax season and ongoing work on the inventory of tax returns filed earlier this year, this penalty relief deadline of September 30th strikes a balance. It is critical to us to not only provide uh, important relief to those affected by the pandemic, 
but this deadline also allows adequate time to prepare our systems and our work uh, streams to serve taxpayers and tax community during the 2023 filing season, end quote. The relief announced, there's a link to that announcement here, last month applies to the failure to file penalty. The penalty is typically assessed at a rate of 5% per month up to 25% uh, of the unpaid tax when a federal income tax return is filed late. This uh, re uh, relief applies to forms in both the Form 1040 and 1120 series, as well as others listed in the Notice 2022-36. There's a link to that posted on irs.gov. So we've talked about this uh, in some of the past news uh, releases as uh, that they're given that relief for the penalties it's kind of an interesting uh decision so i could see why people would have kind of questions on it because again they gave the relief to people that could have filed on time but chose not to it's not like the pandemic really stopped people from filing on time the pandemic stopped people from basically being able to pay on time so the fact that they're they're doing the relief on the penalty side of things uh, for people that didn't file on time seems a little bit strange because it seems like it's a penalty on the people that actually did file on time even though uh, they didn't have the, the capacity to pay. You would think that if they were trying to give relief to everybody, they would give the relief to the people that maybe couldn't pay, right? That would make more sense to me. But in any case, I also think they might have done it to look more like a stimulus payment. So because they had to return the penalties, they, they, from a political standpoint, maybe they couldn't get the stimulus payments through to be able to give out another stimulus payment. So they tried to do something that looks like they're giving out money in a similar fashion, even though it's not a stimulus payment, it was a uh, penalty relief. And I, and I also, he's arguing here that this is gonna save them time so that they can, they can round up or uh, get up, get ready for the next filing season. I'm not exactly sure how that's the case either because they're gonna have to send out the these payments to the people that already paid the penalty you would think it would be more work not less possibly you can save some time calculating penalties for people they haven't calculated the penalties for but again i i'm a little bit I, I dubious about the rationale here but whatever for anyone who's gotten behind on their taxes during the pandemic this is a great opportunity to get caught up to uh to qualify for relief any eligible income tax return must be filed on or before September 30th, 2022. So meaning if you filed it late, then you're gonna be subject to these late filing penalties typically, and but they're gonna to try to waive those penalties if you still file by the September uh, 30th. So those who filed during the first few months after the September 30th cutoff will still qualify for partial penalty relief. That's because for eligible returns filed after that date, the penalty starts accruing on October 1st, 2022, rather than the return's original due date. Because the penalty accrues based on each month or part of a month that a return is late, filing sooner will limit any charges that apply. Unlike the failure to file penalty, the failure to pay penalty and interest will still apply to unpaid tax based on the return's original due date. So in other words, when you file the tax return, there's really two things that, that you can hit, get hit with penalties from. One is the failure to file. You don't file the, the return on time. And so then they start hitting you with penalties and interest. The other is that you didn't pay. So the fact that you didn't file doesn't mean you still don't have the non-payment penalty. And again, to me, uh, if someone was in was in financial difficulties, and a lot of people have been, of course, in the last uh, couple of years, and they couldn't file the tax return or they couldn't pay the taxes like it's the first time and they couldn't pay the taxes because of the, all the craziness that's going on, you would think that they could still file and then they couldn't pay. They'd have to go on a payment plan or something like that. Uh, so you would think that in order to give a fair relief, you would think that you would give it maybe on the payment side of things rather than the filing side of things, because even if you can't pay the taxes, you could still file, you could still avoid the, avoid the filing. And if you, it, a lot of people may not have because maybe it's the first time they couldn't pay and they decided to just not do anything, you know. But again, it seems kind of unusual that, that they would do that when it also gives an incentive, like they've done this a few times now with this penalty relief kind of stuff where they're incentivizing people to, to not, uh, not file or not pay their estimated taxes because it might get relieved. And that's, I don't know, a little weird. Any case, the failure to pay penalty is normally 0.5%, uh, one half of 1% per month. 
The interest rate is currently 5% per year compounded daily, but that rate is due to rise to 6% on October 1st, 2022. Obviously, they're trying to keep up with inflation with that increase. Taxpayers can limit these ch uh, charges by paying promptly. For more information, including details on fast and convenient electronic payment options, visit irs.gov forward slash payments. There's a link to that here. Penalty and interest charges generally don't apply to refunds. The notice also provides details on relief for filers of certain international information returns uh, when a penalty is assessed at the time of filing. No relief is available for applicable international information returns when the penalty is part of an examination. To qualify for this relief, any eligible tax return must be filed on or before September 30th, 2022. Penalty relief is automatic. This means that eligible taxpayers who have already filed their return do not need to apply for it, and those filing it now do not need to attach a statement or other document to their return. So if you haven't filed and you're and you're late, right, <laughs> then you want to file before this deadline and you, they should automatically apply the penalty without you having to take any extra steps. If you have already filed, it was late, but you filed, then they may have already charged you the the penalties, which means they're going to have to refund the penalties, which once again should be automatic. They should just do the calculations and refund them. Uh, that's where you would think this would make be more work for the IRS as they possibly have to send out those checks, but possibly that's from a political standpoint, what they're looking for to look like they're sending out stimulus payments or something. Any case, uh, generally, those who have already paid the penalty are uh, getting their refunds most by the end of September. So penalty relief is not available in some situations, such as where the fraudulent return was filed, where the penalties are part of an accepted offer in compromise or closing agreement, or where the penalties were finally determined by a court. So this relief is limited to the penalties that the notice specifically states are eligible for relief. For ineligible penalties, such as the failure to pay penalty, taxpayers may use existing penalty relief procedures, such as applying for relief under the reasonable cause criteria or the first time abate program. And that might be applicable to a lot of people in the last couple of years, because again, a lot of people, uh, you know, weird, weird situations in terms of, of work situations happened. You might have just said, I'm, I froze and I didn't file. I just said, I'm not going to do anything because I can't pay the taxes. I don't know what to do at that point in time. So if you got if you got penalties, sometimes you can call the IRS and it's similar to like contacting your credit card company when you missed a payment and they charge you a penalty and you're like, hey, I'm a really good customer. Just could you waive the penalty? Usually they will for the first time. Good behavior penalty, similar kind of thing with the taxes. So if you get uh, out of whack and it's like, but you're usually doing well, then you might be able to uh, get those those penalties abated for basically good good business relations before that right so visit irs.gov penalty relief there's a link to that for details this relief doesn't apply to 2021 returns whether or not they have a tax filing extension the irs urges everyone to file their 2020 return soon to avoid processing delays for filing tips visit irs.gov irs.gov the irs website irs go v anyways there's links to all this stuff i'm gonna stop saying anyways i got in the habit of saying anyways it's certain i'm starting to bug myself so if i'm bugging you by saying that then uh i'm i'm working on it i'm working on it but there'll be a link to this in the description